And to understand the shifting politics in Germany, we spoke to Gurjeet Singh, who is the former Indian envoy to Germany. Let's just listen into this exclusive conversation. So I think this is a very confusing election, both in how it is held and its results. And don't be in too much of a hurry to find out who's the successor. I mean, maybe by Christmas, you may be lucky. Uh, coalition formation in Germany has been happening all the time. In fact, all of Angela Merkel's four terms have been coalitions. So you would think that they would have by now learned how to make coalitions. But this remains the most difficult part of government formation. So this time, neither of the two centrist parties have got anything more than 30%. They are both around 25%. Now, certainly it's a big loss for the CDU from about 32% in 2017, which was their then worst showing. They are down to 24.7, which is now their really worst showing. So, but even last time, having lost the most, they were still the winners. So don't write them off either. Secondly, the, this time, two parties don't seem to be able to have enough seats to form a working government. So therefore, you have to have a minimum of three, which makes it all the more difficult. Last time in 2017, in order to avoid a grand coalition with the SPD, the CDU tried to negotiate with the Free Democrats and the Greens, and ultimately, after a couple of months, gave up. Because the smaller parties are extremely ambitious, and I think, I hope they have learned their lesson. So this time, what is happening is that these two parties, the Greens, who got about 15%, and the Free Democrats, who have 11%, want to get into government. And I think they can team up with anybody, with SPD or CDU. But the biggest contradiction is between them themselves. So I think they've done the right thing by saying, let's first talk to each other, sort out our agenda, and then we'll offer it to both the parties, and who offers us a better deal, we'll go with them. More important for India is what would happen to India under a new uh, chancellor. Now, you know, under, under Angela Merkel, she set up the Indo-German Intergovernmental Council at the level of a summit, which met every two years, and she never missed a meeting. That led to a lot of ODA-led development with India, you know, metros, green economy, uh, you know, green corridors, many things, solar rooftop. But she could not enthuse German business to come to India like they went to China. Now, with the new chancellor, Prime Minister Modi will have an opportunity to have the next meeting of the Intergovernmental Commission this year. So that will be a good chance. Now, we have to see whether Germany will break out of its ODA-led relationship with India and move to a private sector-led relationship, which is what we really want, and this is what they have with China. If the Greens are in the coalition, it is likely that they would be in charge of the foreign ministry. Now, if they are there, and even if they are not, the Greens are not hot on China or Russia. And they are more, uh, you know, they like to talk about ideologies against them and be tough. So there may be an opportunity for India, but we need to be a bit careful because if the Greens tend to be sanctimonious, then we could also get singed. So I think it's a double-edged weapon. But the free Democrats are going to be friends of India because they like to support business. But the problem in Germany is that the business supports China. And they are the ones who led Merkel there. So I think this is where it's not only the coalition, but also business that we have to deal with. And we need to persuade Germany that like the United States and the Quad, they need to take India more seriously, what's and all, and say strategically we need to work with you. That is the approach we would like to see from Germany. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.